Good day, folks. It's Tony Fortunato from The Technology Firm. A little bit more Kali Linux for you. We're going to do two things. We're going to look at Kali Linux capturing packets from the command line. We're going to look at the GUI for Wireshark. We're also going to talk about the file system because that's kind of a very important point. So let's just jump right into it. Right here on the Kali Linux screen, you'll see a terminal emulator button. It's synonymous with the command line for the Windows people out there who need a translation. First command we're going to type is pwd. That is print working directory. I've also heard people call it present working directory. But it shows you the path of where you are. Now, I strongly encourage you not to use this default path to pile all your trace files in there. I would, I would probably, um, I would recommend that you just create a new folder and put all your stuff in there. To do that, we're going to navigate our way around. The first thing is um, ls is going to show you a directory or dir even works. You can do that. And we're going to create a folder within the documents folder and we're going to call it traces. So we're going to change directory to its uppercase is important. It's case sensitive. And as you can see, it's grayed out the rest of the path. So if I just hit the right arrow key, it'll fill it in and I just hit enter. And you look like those cool guys on TV, those hacker guys. So from there, we're going to create another folder. MKDIR, make directory traces. And now I can change directory to traces as well. Again, please mind your case. If you did a capital T, you need one of those. And you can see Kali is actually showing me the path here, documents and traces. We're good to go. So the other thing is to train Wireshark and configure it to put the files there. Now, if I was going to use T Shark, from the command line, it will put that trace file in this current folder by default. Of course, you can specify a folder, but that's not what we're going to do. So from the previous video, I showed you how to use T Shark from the command line. So if you need to prime up on that, you can do that. My interface is going to be interface number one. And I'm going to add a dash W, which writes to a file. And the file name is just trace.pcapng. That's all I'm going to do. Enter. So now it's capturing packets. Now, depending on what you're doing and what's on in the background, you may not see anything, or you might see a whole bunch of packets. That's kind of important to distinguish what you're seeing and what you're not seeing versus what you expect to see. So I'm expecting to see packets, so I have to generate some. So I'm gonna open up another terminal emulator, and I'm gonna just simply ping at eight, and here's what I like to do, a dash C for packet for ping count, and then space five. I only wanna send five of them. So that way, it doesn't just go on forever, right? If it went on forever, you'd have to hit Control C and break out of it, and you don't have to bother with any of that. So five packets sent, five packets received, right? This is 14, because there might be some other stuff going on in the background, ARPs, DNS, who knows, who cares? So from there, I'm going back to the screen where my T-Shark is, and I need to stop the capture. Again, Control C will stop the capture. If I was to do DIR uh, or LS, you will see now there's trace.pcapng. In Windows, if you had a file association with pcapng to Wireshark, you would simply type trace.pcapng, enter, and Wireshark would launch. Well, that's not going to happen by default. You can do all sorts of things to make that work, but I just want to work with the default here. So the better way to do it from the command line, if you really want to do that, is type Wireshark, because you're going to launch the Wireshark program, and then the trace file that you want to work on, enter. And now you see Wireshark is loaded, and it has loaded that trace.pcap file. So now I've got my file, and I'm in Wireshark. So while I'm in Wireshark, a couple of other things. Help, About, and at the very top, you'll see the Folders tab. When you click that, you can actually see where these capture files are being written to. So that's the folder, that's the path. Great. A whole bunch of other stuff in here that I'm not going to get into right now. If you want to change the folder location and make it static because you're working on a project and everything's going to the ABC Corporation folder, that kind of thing, well, you should set that. If you go to Edit, Preferences, or Control-Shift-P, the very first thing you'll see, it says, Remember Main Window Size and Placement. That's good. It's got nothing to do with what we're doing. Open Files in the most recently used folder. That is the default. So whatever folder I was in, that's where it's going to put it. Or I can click below it and I can specify that's where my stuff's always going to go. 
And that's what I encourage you to do, right? Don't, don't, don't use this first option unless there's a really good reason to do it. Please create a folder. Please put all your files there. And that way you'll know where they always are. So again, I'm going to try to keep this short. I don't want to keep this too long. And we'll do the next session will be something else with Wireshark using Kali. Have a good day. Bye for now.